Now, an assessment of South Africa's offshore wind potential suggests we have more than enough to power our electricity grid. Could this be the answer to our high-priced and dirty coal problem, our aging infrastructure and five years of load shedding? Now, researchers believe that offshore wind turbines could ultimately supply between 15 and 800% of our electricity needs. Let's discuss this now with Gareth Effort, senior lecturer at Stellenbosch University's Department of Mechanical and Mechatronic Engineering. Good evening and thank you very much uh, for your time. So I wonder, how did you assess South Africa's offshore wind energy potential? It shows that there's great potential offshore Durban, Richards Bay and Stres Bay. Good evening. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Um, the study came about through a master's project uh, from one of my students, and we looked at the number of factors that um, influence uh, energy availability for offshore wind farms. We looked at the depth of the ocean, the wind speeds, the location, marine protected areas, uh, ESCOM grid connection, all the variables that we think are important to developing an offshore wind farm. All right, so it sounds like the potential is there, uh, but how much legwork and how much money is going to be required to actually lift it off the pages of a master's thesis and make it a reality? Unfortunately, that's not a, a happy answer. That's going to take quite a lot of time and quite a lot of money. Um, if we look at overseas uh, estimates, it's about five to ten years for an offshore wind farm to get started, to be constructed in commercial operation, and that's assuming all the necessary legislations in place, which we don't have in this country at the moment. And offshore wind is a very new renewable energy source, so it's a lot more expensive than the traditional onshore wind systems we see these days. All right, so um, legislation, you say, simply doesn't exist for, for this particular uh, type of technology? Yes, so there's nothing in place. Um, the REAP, as everybody knows, deals with uh, the renewable energy uh, IPPs. But there's nothing in place from the South African government to deal with offshore wind. Um, there's nobody talking about the rights to setting up a wind farm, who's going to lease the, that area of the ocean to us and so forth. So it's, it's quite a lot of paperwork before we can get started. All right. So would this be something that you'd need government to, to be on board with? Um, um, or is it something that the private sector would likely drive? It will definitely be driven by the private sector, but government needs to sign off on it, just like they have with the REAP, where they've showed they have a willingness and an appetite for renewable energy. They have to show the same kind of uh, appetite for offshore wind. If they're um, willing to take off from what the, the private sector builds, then we'll definitely see a boom in the, in the industry. And how far out to sea? I mean, practically, how does it work? I mean, I have in my mind, and I'm sure it's wrong, one of those massive white spinning windmill-type wind turbines sticking out of the ocean. I'm guessing it doesn't work like that, or does it? Well, it's pretty much the same as onshore. Um, the size is different. The scale is much larger offshore because we don't have as many um, restrictions. But it's the same spinning windmill, as you put it, large tower. Um, the study that looked at the 800% opportunity for South African um, energy looked at distances greater than 10 kilometers away from our, or not, sorry, not greater than 10 kilometers away, with depths greater than 100 meters. So our ocean shelf is very deep, and if we take um, full use of our exclusive economic zone, we can do up to 800% of the energy requirements. The more realistic version is the 15%, which also excluded marine protected areas, which South Africa has quite a lot of, and that's closer to onshore. But that also includes um, legislation that's not applicable in South Africa, but it's applicable overseas, where you can't come too close to the shore so that it's not an eyesore for, um, for your locals or for anybody near, near, the, near the coastline. It's sufficiently far away that you won't be able to see it unless you're you know, going out looking for it. <laughs> Are there any environmental risks? We have some turbulent sea conditions here. Um, I'm not sure on the conditions, how they, how they fare relative to the North Sea, where there's a lot of offshore wind. Um, the biggest concern would just be how do we attach these floating structures and how do we deal with the, the turbulence? I mean, the Cape of Gullis and Cape of Storms, it's, it's got its name for a reason, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's new technology, it's expensive technology, uh, but it sounds potentially incredible. Just, just talk to me about the costs. I mean, compared to, let's say, building something like a Kusile again, is it, is it a lot more expensive uh, than that build, for example? Uh, is it more expensive than building a, more, uh, a new nuclear plant? 
it's it's tough to gauge um, because of the unique conditions with offshore where your ocean depth is a factor, where the type of turbine you put up is a factor, and where the, the technology you're using to attach that turbine to the floor is a factor. There is no uh, levelized cost of electricity, which is the baseline you can compare different technologies to. So if you were comparing Kusile and uh, Kuburg and a wind farm, you'd have to look at the LCOE value of each to figure out what the effective cost is. And unfortunately, given the, the severe range of variables for offshore wind, I don't have a value for you. It will be a lot more expensive than onshore wind. So while onshore wind is competitive at the moment, actually cheaper than coal, I can't say the same for offshore. So is this something, you know, that, that you'd take to government, or is this just a lovely theoretical idea that realistically is never going to get off the ground? I think it has a good chance of getting off the ground. Um, I think given the, the success we've seen overseas, it would be short-sighted uh, for government not to put in plans to look at offshore. We have the potential, the expertise is available to us, and it's something that we can drive as local industry. Absolutely, and we need lots of great ideas and innovation. So thank you so much. Really fascinating, Gareth Effort, Senior Lecturer at Stellenbosch University's Department of Mechanical and Mechatronic Engineering.